Hello, this is Dr. Behring Askarian. I am an associate professor at Washington State University. I am also a professional engineer at PE in the state of Washington in the area of thermal fluids. This video is going to be about engineering equation solver, uh, also known as EES, E E S. And it's a very powerful tool when it comes to solve fluid mechanics problems, thermodynamics problems specifically, and heat transfer, you know, things like that, thermal system design when you deal with pumps you know, uh, turbines, you know, things like that. So um, in this short video, um, we're gonna introduce you to EASE if you have never used it before. So you get uh, an idea how to use EASE and how it works, basic introduction, uh, you know, unit systems, uh, unit conversion, how it can convert units in it. Then we're gonna talk about um, basic thermodynamics uh, functions in it. Basic functions that we use, like viscosity, you know, density, specific volume, enthalpy, entropy, things like that. And um, then we're going to talk about property indicators. These are very basic things in ease. And at the end of this video, I'm going to solve one simple thermodynamics problem, a turbine problem, basically. And so you get an idea how things work in ease. So let's get started. So part one is part A is basic introduction to ease, like this. All right, this is ease, an engineering equation solver. This is academic uh, version of it, uh, academic professional. So I'm gonna give you some uh, examples of how you can use this software. First, we're gonna start with the, the basic idea, how ease works. Ease works based on the number of equations and unknowns, variables. So basically, it always looks at a set of equations, a system of simultaneous equations. If you have like four unknown variables, you need to have four equations for it, basically. If you go back to like high school, when you solve like uh, linear equations, a system of like simultaneous equations, I can have an equation like this. I can say x plus y equals one and x minus y equals six. That could be a set of simultaneous equations. There are two equations, two unknowns. Ease can solve this problem numerically by using iteration basically that's how it works so there's this button here that solve f2 that if you push this button after you write your equations and it doesn't matter in what order you write the equations as long as you have enough equations and enough unknowns it's going to iterate ease is default for the range of variables to to iterate is actually negative infinity to positive infinity because this is a system of two linear equations it doesn't matter Sometimes in some equations, you have to define the range for ease. That would be a little advanced, but not that much advanced. But um, because it's just a basic introduction, I'm not going to get into that. So right now, this equation, we have two, two of them, x plus y equals 1 and x minus y equals 6. Okay, so I can run it. I can run it. Ease is solving it. It is already solved it, and it didn't take much time. It, using iteration, continue. Now I have the answer. x is 3.5 and y is negative 0.25. Now you might ask, okay, so the font is small. Normally when you start ease, you actually go to basics, like you go to options. You can go to options, you can go to preferences, and then you can change the font if you want. You can even use like Times, Times New Roman, you know, whatever you want. Uh, depends on the size of your monitor, whatever works for you, right? So I'm going to pick Arial 12. For this monitor, small monitor that I have, uh, I guess that I'm sharing with you, this size works. If you have a bigger monitor, then uh, you have to, uh, you know, make some adjustments. Okay, now I guess probably you can see it better. And when I solve it, again, it's the same thing. But, you know, what makes ease powerful is that, uh, you know, I can actually add another equation to this. I can say x plus y plus z equals 1 and x minus y plus, I don't know, 2 times z equals 6. That would be a different equation, right? And uh, let's see if we can solve it. Well, I can just write it. And this didn't work. Why? Because I have two equations and three unknowns. I added one more unknown. I added z to this equation. Of course it doesn't work, and it's going to send you an error, and you can see how that works. So I need to add one more equation to this. Let's say the other equation is two times x plus five times y 
minus z equals eight. Let's see if there is an answer. I just came up with some random equations. Uh, I hope this, there's an answer to this. I think there is because this is a system of linear equations. So we can run it and looks like he solved it. And yes, x equals 17 and y equals negative seven and z equals negative nine. So that was my system of equations. X plus y plus z is one, you know, x minus two, but x minus y plus two z is six and two x plus five y minus z is eight. What makes E powerful is the, um, like the thermodynamic functions. Before we get to that, I'm going to show you some really neat trick. If you, you look at this button, x equals y is the equation window that every time you want to go back to equations, you just push this button here. Equation window, control E. When you push this button, which is F10, formatted equations, E will show you the equations in the regular, the, the nice format that we are familiar with when you actually write it on the paper. And uh, it looks really nice. Look at this, x plus y minus c and x. This, this looks really nice. It's going to look even nicer when it comes to thermodynamic problems. When you have like delta, you want to show delta t, and you want to show rho, and density, and tau, and you know, these um, Greek parameters and stuff. So it's, the equations are going to look good when, it, when you solve a turbine problem or a Brankian cycle. It says m dot, and it shows m dot with the m with the dot on top of it. And so it, it, it's going to, equations are going to look really nice in these. And that's my that's one of the nice things about these. So um, so for now we just covered the basics of ease. In ease, uh, what you need to know is that you need to have a set of equations, and uh, for the n equations, you need to have n variables. That's like a basic, basic thing when you solve these problems. Now, the next topic is, okay, there is the idea of unit system and um, unit conversion. Now I'm going to talk about that. Okay, let's talk about part B of this uh, video. That is unit system in ease and unit conversion, like this. Okay, let's do it. I'm going to share ease one more time. Okay, so uh, we're back to ease and we want to talk about unit systems and unit conversion. First, uh, I guess I don't need these equations because I'm gonna uh, go back to you know uh, thermodynamic therm uh, functions. Uh, first, I'm going to show you one thing, something that you can do, you know, to just document your code is between quotations, you can, you know, write your name, for example. This is uh, my name. I just wrote it here. And then you can start with the problem. Okay, this is, these are the given values of the problem. When you, uh, you know, put the text in between two double quotations, basically you can document your code. And if you run it, basically nothing happens. And if you look at it in the formatted equation, but right now you don't see anything. If I add some variables, you're gonna see them in blue, like the, the, the documentation in blue. Okay, well, well, your goal is to solve fluid mechanics problems, um, you know, uh, heat transfer problems, thermodynamics problems, thermal system design, things like that. Sometimes you can use it for other purposes, in fact. Um, I have solved circuit problems using ease because it doesn't matter. It set, solves a set, set of you know, simultaneous equations. Um, the first thing you do here, you go to options. When you start an ease code, after you document it with your name and everything, you go to unit system here. You go to unit system. And then here we have different types of unit system. You have English unit systems. Well, I would say God may help you if you use English unit systems. So I usually stay away from it. And I solve problems in this I units. You might say, okay, I need to solve the problem in English units because I need to need to have the final answer in English units. There is a way better, simpler way to get to English units when it comes to the final answer. Even if the given values are in English units, there is a way to convert them to SI units, solve the problem in basic SI units, and then pop out the final answer in English units. So that's my method. And uh, I stick with that and I usually uh, stay away from English. Units. Sometimes you can get away with it, but you know, in English, units you need, uh, you need, uh, uh, you know, slugs for mass and that, that, that causes problems. So 
English is, well, good luck with that if you want to use it, but I usually stick with SI units. You can, you can do different types of SI units. There is basic SI units, and you can never go wrong with basic SI units when you say, okay, so I'm going with basic SI, mass is kilogram, temperature is Kelvin, and energy is joules, and pressure in Pascal. You can actually do it that way. That would be basic, basic SI units. Or sometimes you can keep it basic if you're not dealing with anything like ideal gas law and stuff or entropy in a way that, you know, you're applying the second law and you have Q dot over T or stuff like that, that you need Kelvin in terms of Kelvin. You can just keep everything basic as ions and get away with everything, basically just using Celsius. I'm going to show you, you know, what that means. So that's the first step. The question is, okay, what does that mean if I have units in ease? Okay, well, that's a very good question. First of all, any variable that you show in ease, any variable, if you, uh, it has to have a unit. If you don't give it any unit, ease will assume that these things don't have a unit. Just like last problems that set up simultaneous equations, like three X, Y, and Z that I gave ease, and it didn't have any units. So they were unitless for ease. But us engineers, we, as mechanical engineers specifically, uh, we want to solve problems with units, serious units. So I give you one example. Imagine that, you know, um, um, we have a turbine that, um, you know, uh, steam goes into that turbine as, at a pressure of uh, 15 megapascals and a temperature of, let's say, 550 Celsius and comes out at a pressure of 25 kPa and uh, that's it. And you're supposed to calculate the, the power of it if the M dot is given, if they tell you this isentropic, you know, uh, stuff like that. So, you know, actually, let's just write it down. Let's just, um, you know, the, show the problem, what the problem is, write it on a piece of paper so we know where we are going. All right, here's a problem I want to solve in ease. I have a turbine like this. Let's say this is a turbine. And I'm looking at this turbine. And um, steam is going into this turbine at the pressure of, let's say, 15 megapascals and a temperature of 550 celsius and it comes out as a pressure of 25 kpa let's say this uh, turbine is an isentropic turbine which means basically q dot of this turbine is zero watts and uh you know, entropy generation in this turbine is also zero. S dot gen is zero. So this is a turbine. I want to calculate the amount of work, W dot of turbine, that comes out is providing power for us. So that's our ultimate goal. We want to calculate this, but we need one more piece of information. We need M dot. Let's say M dot is also given as 15 kilograms per second. So this is our problem, our ultimate goal. Eventually, we're going to solve this problem in ease, and everything has units. You know, how do I solve this problem? All right, let's do it. Let's go back to ease and start solving this problem. But there are some basics I have to cover for you first. Because this is the first example, I'm going to basically solve everything in uh, you know basic SI units, except that I keep the temperature at Celsius because it's not going to cause me a problem because I'm not going to write equations that need Kelvin. If I'm dealing with ideal gas law and things like that, I have to write it. And uh, so I'm I'll be fine. So one more time, let's go to options. Let's go to unit system and the basic assignments, mass is kilogram, Celsius, joules, and pascals. At the end, maybe probably I'll show you how to use like kilopascals and things like that and we'll be fine. All right. So first I have to show the given values, whatever is given. Let's, let's uh, talk about those. Um, all right, so the pressure is given, this, these are the given values between turbine, the, from the beginning of, tur before the turbine, P sub in equals uh, 15 megapascals. Because my basic SI units, I chose basic SI units, I have to be consistent with the unit system I picked. So um, 15 megapascals is 15 million pascals. So I have to show it in terms of pascal because I picked pascals as my unit system. Okay. The temperature, and here's the thing, here's the first thing that you learn here. In ease, you put the units in brackets like this. So every number that's supposed to have a unit, first you show the unit, then you show the unit. So first you show the number, 
the value of, of it ma and magnitude of it, whatever you want to call it, and then the unit in brackets. That's what I did. Okay, that's what I had. What else did I have? I had pressure out, pressure that is coming out of the turbine like this. Okay, and what was that supposed to be? 25 kilopascals, so that is 25,000 pascals. I'm going to write it this way. You can write 25,000 into 25 E3. That is the, you know, the exponential form, so it easy understands. Just like MATLAB, MATLAB understands it too. One thing I need to tell you that ease is not case sensitive. Like if I write here, instead of P out, I write like lowercase P out and the capital P out to ease, they are the same, you know, variables. Although when it comes to showing them, when you print the results, it's gonna show it capital P or lowercase p. That's the only way that you can see what your variables were in the, in the code. But in terms of, you know, recognizing the variables, ease is not case sensitive. So lowercase t and capital T are the same for ease when it comes to variables. Okay, cool. We got that. What about temperature? Temperature in sub in equals what? I gave you a value of 550 Celsius, 550 Celsius. This is Celsius. Okay, cool. I got that. All right. And uh, this is pretty much everything I had. I had another variable, m dot, which was, if I remember correctly, 15 kilograms per second. 15 kilograms slash second, like this. Okay, I got that one too. Cool. Now, here's what I recommend when you use ease. After you, you know, you create one block, three, four lines, whatever, stop right there and run your code. Run, your, run the code and see what happens. So if you run this code, for example, let's see what we get. Uh, we got like, okay, m dot is, and it shows very nicely, like m dot, 15 kilograms per second, and, you know, pressure in, I have it, you know, very nicely. P out is, um, you know, 25,000 Pascals and T in is 550 Celsius. This, from now on, when you use ease, this is very, very super important. That every time, every time that you run an ease code and uh, at every step that you are, you should get this message. No unit problems were detected. If there is a unit problem in your code, you have to fix it because there is a high probability that you wrote the equations incorrectly or you used the wrong units or unit system. Your unit system is not consistent with your equations. Something bad is happening. So this is the, the very important step to avoid unit problems. Keep that in mind. Okay, cool. And um, uh, I'm going to show you how to solve some of these unit problems, but um, so we'll get there with gear. So uh, this is what I recommend. When you write just a little bit of the code, run it. And if there's any unit problems, keep basically fixing those unit problems before go you go to the next stage. Why? Because when you code like this, your error, the errors of the code are usually in the last lines. That's what it is. Basically, when you just write one line and you keep running it and you fix the units and everything, and you make sure everything is good to go, the error is in the last line of the code. That's a very good way to deal with. Sometimes you can't do it that way because sometimes you have to write a bunch of equations, seven, eight different equations, seven different unknowns, and then solve them simultaneously together. You can't take these steps. But as much as you can, do this, especially when you write the given. Um, I don't recommend writing the whole code at the very beginning from the you know beginning to the end and then running the code. You're going to encounter a lot of errors. Don't do that. This is a way better method. And uh, so it's going to save you a lot of time debugging, you know, codes. All right. So going back to the, uh, this was, this is a solution, uh, you know, window. I would like to go back to the, um, you know, the equation window, which I'm going to push this button. So uh, I'm back there. Now, uh, I would like to show you a couple of things, um, you know, um, um, so I showed you the units, right? The question is, what if, um, what, what if uh, I wanted to have um, the, the pressure of the turbine was not in, you know, SI units, because I am, a, uh, you know, I'm recommending strongly that you should solve your problems in SI units and convert the last result to, 
you know, uh, English units, if you need, if you need to. What if the pressure was given already in uh, English units? So what would be the example of that? So let's go back to the same problem and imagine that all these values instead of SI units were given in English units. So how am I supposed to convert them to SI units, solve the problem in uh, SI units, and eventually pop out the final answer for W dot turbine in terms of English units, for example, BTU per hour or um, you know horsepower or whatever I want to show um, uh, I can do. So what I have done before is uh, basically I have this values for the, the, the conversions of all these numbers. We're going to imagine that all these values were given already in, uh, originally in, in English units. So for example, 15 kilograms per, per second in English units would be 33.07 pound mass per second. So that's, um, you know, for example, the inlet for, for M dot or P in in terms of PSI would be 2176 PSI. That's, that's, that value is, is exactly 15 megapascals, right? And uh, what else do I need to add? So temperature, temperature in that is given as 550 Celsius in terms of Fahrenheit is 1022 Fahrenheit. And for outside here, P out, uh, in English units, 25 kPa is about 3.626 psi. And then we finally, in, in, in SI units, we want the value uh, in probably watts or kilowatts or megawatts, but in English units, um, maybe you want it in terms of horsepower, right? So what would be the value of it in horsepower if you're looking for, for that value? Uh, so that's going to be our goal. Now, so we're going to go back to the East code and we're going to pretend that all these values were given in, um, you know, uh, in English units. And then how do we convert them to SI units? And then how we can solve the problem to get the exact, you know, the correct values. So let's go back to ease again. Okay, so we are in ease again. And this is the previous code. We didn't do anything. And we're going to do, again, this exact same thing. We go to unit system, and we're going to keep everything as science. Why? Because I want to solve the problem in as science. But there is a problem here. Everything, all the inputs are in English units. What am I going to do? So what, am I, uh, what I'm going to do here is let's delete these values and type in the values right now, this time, in English units and see what happens. So that's what I'm going to do. P in, the variable is still variable, right? And then, uh, so I have to just convert them. P in as, uh, you know, was given was 2,021.76 PSI. So this is how you convert stuff. You write the number, you show the unit like this, PSI in brackets, then use a conversion factor, which is called, which is uh, coming from a function called convert function in ease. The way convert works is like this. You do a star times convert and then open parentheses. The, uh, you want to go from PSI to Pascal's because my basic SI is in the unit you know, system I picked basic SI. I use, I picked Pascal. So I have to do Pascal. So what I, I want to go from what to what? I want to go PSI to Pascal because I want to solve everything in Pascal. So I go PSI comma Pascal like this. That's it. It's going to find a conversion factor from PSI to Pascal. We know that, you know, one PSI is about 6.895 kPa. That would be the conversion factor. So it's going to use it. So that would be 6.895 times the 10 to the third, basically Pascal. It's going to apply that and it's going to convert it to Pascal. P out was uh, 3.626 based on what I had, PSI like this, times convert I'm going from PSI to Pascal again, like this. Okay, what else do I need to do? TN was, oh, this one is interesting. TN is, um, is in Fahrenheit and I need it in Celsius. For temperature, for all the other you know, variables, convert function works, works just fine. There is one exception and that's temperature. For other functions, it works because there's always one single conversion factor. However, for temperature, that's not the case. For temperature, that's not the case at all. Because if you want to go from Fahrenheit to Celsius, you have to first subtract 32, and then you'd have to divide it by 1.8 
or something like that, right? Not something like that. That that's that's what it is. So it's not just a simple conversion factor. There is actually you have to subtract, you know, thirty-two to go from Fahrenheit and then divide it by one point eight. So there is another function that is specifically for temperature. It's called convert temp. That's what you need to use. And I'm going to show you how it works. Convert temp like this. Convert temp. And I want to go from Fahrenheit to Celsius. So first you show the first unit that you have, Fahrenheit, comma, the unit that is your goal, you want to go to that, comma, then the value. What was the value? It was 10, 22, and you have to show the unit because it is a very, it, it is a number. So numbers in ease have to have a meaning. So that would be Fahrenheit. This would work just fine. And M dot that we talked about was 33.07 pound mass per second. I'm going to do the same thing. 33.07. LBM pound mass over second times convert for everything else convert function works. I want to go from pound mass per second to kilograms per second. Beautiful SI units, right? Like this. This should work just fine. I have to run it now to see if the program works and let's do it. Look at this. We are back in business. Exact same numbers as we had before. So even if, and I have to save this, so make sure you save your code somewhere. So um, uh, basically, so we, you know, you don't lose your data, whatever. So I'm going to save it somewhere in, in my, somewhere on the desktop or whatever I want to do. So that would be a test, you know, whatever. So now you know how to do the unit conversion and you don't have to solve problems in English units. You just... In the inlet values are English, sure, convert them to SI, solve your problem in SI, and then I'm going to show you how to convert them back to English and it's the final answer very easily, just super easily. Like, this is not a problem at all. Okay, now, so we talked about unit, uh, unit system and, um, you know, um, uh, conversion factors. We, we talked about that and you should be good to go. It can play with, uh, you know, a, a lot of, you know, these units. You know, uh, let, let me tell you one thing. If you want to find help in ease, uh, you can go to help and there's help index. If you're looking for a function, you don't know how it works or whatever. So you go to help index like this. And then what do you do? You just type uh, like convert. That would be the function, right? Enter and it says this is the function convert display. So it shows you the syntax from like from to two. You can read this whole thing. You know, this is an example convert from like feet squared to inches squared, whatever you need, right? So it, it, it tells you how the system basically works. It, either you know, you can sometimes, sometimes it shows you like other functions that you know might be interesting, like convert temperature. Uh, just like what I told you about temperature, it says note the convert function will convert temperature the differences, the temperature differences, but it's not going to convert the value of a temperature. And for that one, you have to use convert temp. Yeah, so the um, the convert will convert temperature differences. For example, if you have like a 50 Fahrenheit difference between like, I don't know, 10 Fahrenheit and 60 Fahrenheit. If you want to change that difference to Celsius, that, yeah, you have to just divide that 50 by 1.8, and that would be whatever it is in Celsius in terms of difference. It does work so for delta T works, but for absolute values, when you talk about, okay, this is 550 Celsius, what is it in Fahrenheit? That's not a temperature difference. That's a, like the absolute value of temperature. Then you have to use the convert temp function. That's what I told you. And uh, you can read this whole thing. And every time you need any help with any function, you can just come here and, you know, um, uh, find the what, what you need. So now uh, our next step is basic thermodynamic functions. Because when I want to solve that problem, um, the, the turbine problem, then I'm going to need some thermodynamics functions. So what are basic uh, thermodynamic functions in ease? That's our next step. So let's take a look at our problem. Let's take a look at that problem we talked about. Let's write the solution for it. 
And uh, when we write a solution, we realize what you know um, functions we're going to need. So this is our problem. We're back to our problem. And uh, we need to have a solution for it before we go to ease and, and solve it. So let's see how I can find, what am I looking for? I am looking for W dot T that is coming out of the turbine. Uh, so I'm, I have two states. We have in and out. At in, I have PN and I do have TN. So this state is determined because I have two independent properties. I should be good to go. And uh, that means that I can find the value of the enthalpy that is going in and I can find the value of entropy that is going in. That's good. For state, for state out, I do have the value of P out and I don't have anything else. But the problem tells me this is an isentropic process. Isentropic means adiabatic and reversible. And if you write the second law of thermodynamics, you're going to end up with the fact that, okay, S entropy has to stay the same. So this implies that S out is basically S in. So it looks like I actually do have two independent properties. I have P out and S out. And as a result, this state is determined. And I can find the values by the value of H out, which is what I need to use in the first law of thermodynamics. Now, if you write the first law of thermodynamics for this process, for example, you know, if you ignore the changes in, um, um, you know, kinetic energy and potential energy, this is a turbine, you know, steady state, the whole thing, m dot times h in minus h out like this equals zero. That's the first law of thermodynamics for this process. Well, uh, it's, I'm looking for W dot net and because it is isentropic, adiabatic and reversible, Q dot net is zero. So what I'm going to end up with for the first law of thermodynamics is basically just negative W dot net plus M dot H in minus H out equals zero. That would be my solution. So I need to somehow find some values using ease. That's my goal. My goal is to find the value of enthalpy in, entropy in, and then uh, adding this equation in, the, in ease as S out equals S in, and somehow use that because that becomes two independent properties with the pressure out to find H out, and then I can get all these values and put them in the first law of thermodynamics, and I can solve the problem, find the W dot net. That would be my game plan in this case. All right, so now that I have, I know my game plan, let's go to ease and see how we can find, you know, enthalpy and entropy. What's the, what's the plan here? All right, we're back in ease. Okay, so we're gonna go to the solution part of um, the, the problem, solution like this. Uh, what I like to do is to, you know, separate the states, state one and state two, state in in this case and state out. So what do I know about the state in? You know, the values are given there in the P in and P out are given. And I need to find uh, the, the value of enthalpy here. Okay, well, now we're going to talk about ease functions. This is where that unit system that you pick picked comes into play, you know, uh, in a big way. That you have to be consistent with the unit system that you picked. I'll give you an example. What am I looking for? Two things. Entropy in and enthalpy in. Okay, cool. I have two independent properties, P in and T in. Sure. My unit system is Pascals and Celsius and joules, right? So then in that case, my entropy has joules per kilogram Kelvin. And, um, you know, enthalpy has to be joules per kilogram, not kilojoules, because I didn't pick kilojoules in the unit system. I picked joules in the unit system. So you have to be careful. All right. So how do I find the enthalpy going in? H in, I'm going to call it H in like this. H in, that's, that's just my variable, equals, this function is actually enthalpy, like this, enthalpy. Enthalpy of the, this is how functions work from property functions, or thermodynamic functions work in ease. First, you have the function. The first, um, you know, argument is just the substance, whatever substance it is. In this case, it is water. Steam is water. There are two, there is either steam, we can either use steam for steam, and you can use water. Both of them will send out the same, will return the same values. Steam and water are the same thing in ease. 
Okay, so how do I know about the substances? Again, you can go to help and then search these values in help index and about the substances and you can read about them. That's That would be up to you. So how you find those values. I'm going to show you one thing in eventually in um, you know, help, so that will help, yeah. Okay, once you uh, introduce the substance, except for some cases like, you know, HVAC air H2O, that you need to give three properties. For this particular case, uh, you need two independent properties, just like thermodynamic tables, steam tables, that's the same thing. So you say enthalpy of steam, okay, I know two variables, pressure and temperature. You give those values. Okay, you say P equals P in, and you say T equals, okay, I made a mistake here, all right, P in, and comma, T equals capital T in. Okay, what does this mean? Let's just talk about this. Let's see what it means. The way it works is, uh, th this is the substance. P and T, these P and T, there are called property indicators that that you could you can even have a variable in the code that is p and t it's okay it is okay no problem so when whatever comes before the equal sign is a property indicator that the function recognizes it ha it doesn't have to be separate or it doesn't have to be a different you know very name from the variables that you have so it could be you can have a variable that is exactly p and this function is going to go work just fine right? I'm going to show you. This, what, what comes after the equal sign is a variable in the code. And if you look at the code that I have, I do have such a variable. So when you look at this, for example, it's P in, but what is this? This is that guy here, right? And uh, when it comes to like T in, this is T in. And what is that one? Is this one. What ease does is, is going to look for that particular variable in the code with p that is p and with t in that is t in that's how it works with ease basically and uh another question okay so enthalpy is a function steam whatever the argument p in because i chose unit system pascal has to be pascal and i chose celsius as a temperature this argument has to be celsius which is celsius here no problem what the function returns is going to be based on the unit system I picked. Look at the unit system I picked. I picked pascals and joules and kilograms. Whatever this function returns is joules per kilogram. It's not kilojoules per kilogram. It's not megajoules per kilogram. It's going to be joules per kilogram. Now, what I told you is that when you write something like this, you run the, because this is your first code, probably, you're going to run it. You're going to run it. And then, oh my God, I have one potential unit problem. The other ones were okay. So this is that unit problem. How do I set the units? If you know what you're doing in thermodynamics, you're going to double click on this thing, double click, and this shows up. And this is the unit. And you know what this unit has to be based on your unit system. It has to be joules per kilogram, like this. And then there are no unit system. Question, what if I wrongly, I mean, incorrectly, I pick kilojoules, then you have a unit system problem, right? You know, that this is what I'm telling you, that you should never have any unit problems in any ease code. This is a very important step. You have to keep doing this. Make sure everything is okay. All right. And um, one quick question that you might ask is, how do I find the property indicators? What do I know about them? So let's go back to help. I'm going to show you one thing. And, you know, it's uh, eventually up to you how to do this. I'm going to go to help index one more time. I have to share help index. So you should be able to see it. Here I'm going to type property, um, property indicators. And I already found them. Here, property indicators. If you can type this, you're going to have access to all these thermodynamic functions like emissivity, I don't know, conductivity uh, for heat transfer, enthalpy, entropy, I don't know, uh, enthalpy of uh, vaporization, uh, I don't know. So temperature, pressure, specific volume, you know, all of these. You can, um, the young modulus for, you know, you can use that in, you know, mechanics of materials if you want to. 
and the triple point. You know, read read this part. You know, you you can find a lot of interesting functions that you can use. And enthalpy is here, right? And then you can click on them. So when you go to property indicator, the question is, what are those property indicators? You keep going down, and this will gives you the value of property indicators. That, for example, H is specific enthalpy, P is pressure. Um, uh, X is quality, this Q is different, don't worry about it. X is quality, V is specific volume, U is internal energy, and T is temperature, and S is basically a specific entropy. And so um, I would say do your own research, just come here and read the, this stuff, and uh, you'll be fine, you'll be fine, and uh, you can use, you know, functions in ease, basically. So let's go back to ease. So now I have this, there was another property I needed to find, Sn, look at that. So that would be entropy, the function is entropy. You can get it from that list that I showed you. Uh, it's the same thing. I can even copy and paste the, you know, the arguments of the same previous function, control C and then control V, and this is gonna give me the correct value. What's the unit of S? Joules per kilogram Kelvin based on my unit system joules um, per kilogram. Now, this is the interesting part. When you want to uh, enter units and in, in ease that, you know, it's kilogram times Kelvin at the in the denominator, what ease recognizes is dash, the when you want to multiply two units. That only works for units, not inside the code. If you have to multiply a bunch of things inside the code, you use a star, just like regular coding in MATLAB and whatever you do. But in units, kilogram dash Kelvin, and that means at the bottom in the denominator, basically you have you have kilograms multiplied by Kelvin. That's what it means to ease, like this. And you see, there is no unit problems. One quick question. Somebody might ask, okay, well, you chose the unit system as Celsius, and now you are entering Kelvin and you're not getting any unit errors. Why is that? Well, the reason is that um, right now I did not put, uh, any entropy in any equation that I have temperature in terms of Kelvin. For example, if I was writing the uh, first law of thermodynamics, second law of thermodynamics, I'll give you one quick example like this. So if I had like the second law of thermodynamics like this as Q dot in over T boundary in minus Q dot out over T boundary out, plus m dot in s in minus m dot out s out plus s dot gen equals ds cv dt. That's the second law of thermodynamics, right? In this case, these temperatures have to be Kelvin. If I wrote an equation like this in my code and I do Celsius, I'll be screwed. You can't do this. But because I don't have such equations, because I don't have such equations, I can get away with it because I just know the value, I'm returning the value. And here's the thing, the temperature difference, temperature difference in Kelvin and Celsius are the same. The temperature difference is the same. For example, um, we, the, that's the same case with like a specific heat, right? Uh, specific heat, you're like joules per kilogram Kelvin. Yeah, even if you write joules per kilogram Celsius in the code, and uh, sometimes you can get away with that. And uh, that's not a problem. So um, keep that in mind. Why did this Kelvin work here and uh, didn't cause any problems? However, if you type like kilogram Fahrenheit, no, 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 no. That's not gonna. That's not gonna work. Definitely. So because def difference in Kelvin and Fahrenheit, you see this? You see what happened? Difference in Kelvin. They are not the same. And here's the thing, one more thing. In SI units, joules per kilogram Kelvin and joules per kilogram Celsius, they have the same value because it's based on temperature difference. So um, keep that in mind. That's why it didn't uh, you know, cause any errors. All right, so it's all the, uh, you know, uh, the, you're, you're getting a hang of it basically at this point. All right, H in and S in, I have it. Let's go to a state out. That's the second state of the problem when it comes out of the turbine. Uh, I need two independent properties. Uh, well, first I need to find uh, the entropy out. S out, because it is isentropic, equals S sub n. I can even, you know, add a comment here because this is isentropic. So don't worry about it. It is isentropic, isentropic turbine. So these has to be, these have to be the same. And now that I have two, a pressure and a temperature and then entropy, 
I can actually solve the problem, find uh, H out, which is what I need for um, my first law. H out is enthalpy of steam, like this. And when property indicator for entropy for the argument of the function is S. Very intuitive, you know that. Equals S out, like this. I explained how this worked before. I'm not going to explain it again. And pressure is P out. So make sure that these are consistent with your variables in the code. So run it. And now you have another problem because, well, I have to find the, define the unit here. What's the unit of this? Joules per kilogram. And uh, well, why do we have another unit problem? Because there's another S that showed up. I have to take care of this guy too. So joules per kilogram kelp. Now I don't have any unit problems. I make sure I save this and I go back to my code. Right now I have solved everything. Now, the only thing that was left was the first law of thermodynamics. Based on whatever I wrote on the paper, if you didn't see it, just you know, go back and watch that part in the, in the video. Based on first law of thermodynamics, uh, I showed you that Q dot net equals zero, I have to give it a unit. You can't just write zero, watts, because I am doing joules. My unit system is joules, so you know, the unit of uh, power has to be watts because it's joules. If I was doing kilojoules, this would be kilowatts. So you have to be consistent. Q dot net is uh, zero watts. All right, cool. And uh, somebody might ask, oh, why did you write it this way? Q, you know, sub dot sub net. I'm going to show you why, because it's going to show up really nicely here in the formatted equations. Look at this beautiful M dot is M dot, H is H, Q dot looks like a beautiful Q dot. So that's why. Okay, now uh, let's go back to the first law. Let's just write the first law. First law was Q dot net minus W dot net like this plus m dot times h in minus h out equals zero like this that was the first law of thermodynamics like this okay so um You might ask, uh, do I need to add watts here? Um, eventually, if you want, you can, because it's zero watts on the right-hand side, and zero is a number. You can actually add watts here if you want to. That'll be zero watts. Even if you don't, when you go back and fix the units, you can kind of take care of it. But if you want to be like very strict, yes, you can add watts, because that's zero uh, on the right-hand side of the first law is zero watts, basically. If you don't do it, that's, that's fine, too. Uh, you can go to units and, and solve. So when you, uh, so then the next thing it would be just to, you know, run it. Okay, I'm going to run it. So I'm going to run it and then everything is okay. Well, except I have one unit problem. This is it. So I have to double click on it. This is what I did one more time. You go there, you double click on it. It shows up and then you type watts. Okay, it looks like there is no unit problem. That's what I was looking for, w.net. Right click. And you can highlight it, and that would be nice. Now, here's a question. The question is, uh, what if I wanted this power in megawatts instead of uh, watts or kilowatts? When you click on it, there is another form of unit here. There's a unit in purple. You, know, in purple. you can you know, type kW. And then it's going to show you the value in kilowatts also. You can write the, type the value in MW. Then it's going to show the value, the second unit for it in megawatts. Well, look at this. Get this. What if I want it in horsepower? Just type HP. And then you get the value of W dot in horsepower. This is what I told you at the beginning of the video. You don't need to solve problems in English. You convert everything at the beginning using the convert function or convert temp to SI units. You solve problem in SI units. And then at the end of the problem, if you need to indicate the value in English units, just go here, double click. And for the second unit, not the, the main unit has to be consistent. This main unit has to be consistent with your code. Your code was SI. So this has to be the exact same unit, whatever is consistent with your code. That, you can't mess with that. But the secondary unit could be anything that you want to indicate. Horsepower. Uh, 
Can I show that in BTU per hour? Yes, I can. Well, it's power. So power in BTU per hour doesn't mean that much because it's not heat in English. And it's an English unit. Heat transfer is BTU per hour, right? Power, they show power by horsepower. But, you know, there are some, you know, in a science, everything is watts and everything is cool. So, but it's because power, so we're going to show it in terms of horsepower. Now the problem is solved. I solved this particular problem. I'm going to check one thing, though. I want to see if this problem is a realistic problem. Uh, does this work, um, you know, if this is a turbine? So um, when, when for this particular turbine, when it comes out of the turbine, is it going to be like, because usually when in ranking cycle, when it comes out of the turbine, it comes out two phase with like high quality, 80%, 90%, something like that. So I'm going to do a test. I'm going to do a test. I'm going to add another line here to see how this turbine works. Is it when the steam comes out, is it two phase or is it still in the superheated vapor area? So I'm going to add another code here and I'm going to call it quality. X sub out is my variable. And I'm going to write it uh, under the state out, so be consistent. There's a function. You can find it in the list of functions, quality. Give me the quality of steam. I can basically just copy and paste this and control C and control V here and see what it gives me. Now, let me tell you something about uh, the function quality. The function quality um, in ease works like this, basically. If... If the function quality returns a value of 100, you are in the superheated vapor area. If function quality gives you a value, returns a value between zero to one, you are in two phase under the saturation dome. This is what you're you know, familiar with. And if you get a value of negative 100, you are in the compressed liquid area. Because this was isentropic, definitely it's not going to be compressed liquid, but it's going to be either superheated vapor or two-phase. And after we run this one. So I want you to keep that in mind. That's how the quality function works, basically. So let's run it. Let's see what happens. I'm as curious as, as you are. So let's run it. And we ran it, and X out is 81%. This is the quality. So this turbine is a realistic turbine. Basically, you can have a ranking ideal ranking cycle with these numbers, and what comes out of the turbine is basically like this. If you generally want to, you know, show the, uh, I don't know, the, you know, the, the TS diagram for this case based on these numbers, this would be our TS diagram, and then this is your saturation dome, so the turbine is probably here, and it's isentropic, and then it's going to end up somewhere here you know, uh, if it's an ideal cycle. So that would be basically the pump and uh, the, the boiler like this. So that would be four, three, one, two. So that would be your um, three, like this. So this is where you are. And uh, here, quality apparently is 81%. Um, that's what it means uh, for, for this particular drop uh, problem. Okay. Um, uh, before I stop recording, um, it's worth mentioning that uh, this, um, you know, th this part, the, the formatted equation is very nice. First, let's so uh, save it. A formatted equation looks really, really nice like this. And, uh, you know, you have all the unit conversions. Everything looks beautiful, nice, m dot, w dot, everything's clean. Question, why didn't I calculate W? Why didn't I move these values? Because you know that the W dot net, the value of it would be M dot H in minus H out. I kept everything the same. I could have moved W dot net to the other side, right? And I could have uh, rewritten the equation the, from the first law. I could have simplified the first law and I could have written W dot net equals uh, m dot times h in minus h out. I could write it like this in code and it could have worked. It, it's not a problem. Why didn't I do that? Because I didn't have to. And, um, and I kept this like negative sign here on the same side. So I stuck with the, I basically I stuck with the first law of thermodynamics and um, didn't make any changes to it, right? Uh, because I don't have to. 
in ease, as long as you have the same number of equations and variables, you'll be fine. You don't have to do that. That's one of the beautiful things about ease. All right, um, for, final thing is that, you know, some people ask, okay, what if I want to print this out? What if I want to print it out and see how that works? Um, first of all, make sure you don't have any unit problems and I don't have any unit problems. You go to file, you go to print. And uh, I usually don't print the equation. If you print the equation, it prints the equation for you. Usually I just do the formatted equation and solution. And you can do a preview, see how it works. Look at this. Oh, you have all the equations and you have all the solutions with unit, no unit problems here, basically. So I'm going to just print it. Like some sort of uh, print PDF. It's going to be somewhere. I'm going to share that with you after it is um, good to go, basically. And... Um, so this is the, it is ready. Now I'm going to share it with you. So this is the solution after it is uh, printed basically. And it looks very nice. You can see, you know, I have my name at the beginning, all the comments, you know, P in, whatever the conversion factor was in PSI, but we converted to Pascal. We solved the problem. And at the end of the problem, you have the solution and the solution values are highlighted. Very, very clean and neat. You have basically everything. All right. So I hope um, I hope that you learned something from this video, and uh, make sure to subscribe to this channel because I try to you know upload uh, almost one video a day in the area of thermal fluids, and we're, I'm going to upload more videos about ease and uh, you know this this wonderful um, uh, you know uh, software basically. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, have a good day.